Hey guys, welcome back. How's everyone doing? Oh, good to hear. This is the final episode for the XYZ probe, and I hope to leave you with enough information to start using yours. If you are a GRBL user, I will go over some options at the end of the video on how to go about using this on your setup. If you are an NVUM controller user, I'm going to show you how to install and set up the probing. You might have already tried other probing scripts, but there is a bug with the NVUM controller that causes these to fail, which I have devised a workaround for. I will get into the nerd section of this at the end of the video for anyone that's interested. Let's get our probe plates installed and ready to use. First, if you're using the NVUM controller, we need to wire the probe plate to the 12 volt pin. And then there are two options for the probe pin. The first option is you can simply connect the probe pin to an alligator clip, which you can simply clip onto your tool each time you want to probe. Or secondly, if your machine is grounded, you can simply jump this to your ground plane. The way that the probe works in our setup is we bring the probe pin higher by supplying it 12 volts. You can see here on the right hand side that I have my machine grounded, so I'm simply jumping my probe pin to the ground. Once you have this all wired up, it should look something like this. Now let's move over to Mac 3 and get things configured up the way we need them. Something that people have commented on with my previous videos was the screen set I'm using with Mac 3. I decided to modify the one I'm using to include the XYZ probing feature as well as some DROs to easily specify your own measurements. If you don't want to use this screen set and simply came here for the probing code, I will have a link down in the description. If you would like to install the screen set, follow along as I install this and set it up for our probe. First extract the contents of the zip file I've linked in the description to your Mac 3 directory. Now let's load Mac 3. And click on view, load screen set. Find dark screen IDIM modified. Once we've got that loaded, we can go to our offsets page. On our offsets page, I've added a DRO for our plate Y wall and our plate X wall. I've also moved a couple of things around and I've added the auto XYZ button here for the full probing procedure. Okay, let's check that we've got Mac 3 configured correctly for our probe. To do this, go to config, ports and pins, input signals, scroll down on the input signals to probe, make sure it's enabled. The port is set to one, the pin number is two, and the active is low. And we'll go okay. Back to config, save settings. Okay, one of the most important things to check now is on the offsets page, take your probe plate and touch it against your bit. Make sure that this probe LED is illuminating. If this is not illuminating, you're gonna crash your machine. Okay, so let's grab some measurements. First measuring our Y wall, 14.96, and our X wall, 14.79, and then our plate height, 3.29. Back into Mac 3. Okay, let's enter our plate height, and our plate Y wall, and our plate X wall. Lastly, we need to set our edge finder diameter. In our case, we're using a quarter inch bit, so 6.35 millimeters should be perfect here. And that's it for setting the measurements. Let's place our plate on the table. Jog over so that we're about one centimeter above and one centimeter off each side. And we'll initiate our auto XYZ. First, it's going to probe Z. Raise up. Make sure that you turn your flutes so that they contact the plate first, otherwise you're not going to get an accurate measurement. Now the machine's going to move to X and Y zero. And if you manually want to move it down to C0, you can. And there we go. Now it's time for some love for our GRBL users. The boys over at CNC3D have worked on their Sharp CNC commander to include all of the probing procedures in it. Simply load it up, add your measurements, your tool size, and start probing. 
Another alternative is the Open Builds Control software. I know a lot of people are already using this. If you go into the Probe tab, select the Custom XYZ Probe and set your measurements. Then your end mill diameter, confirm and start probing. This will do the same thing. If none of these applications fit the bill, I'm going to put a link to two different scripts in the description that will run for a 1 8 inch or a quarter inch end mill. Okay, nerd out with me here for a minute. This is the macro we're using for our XYZ probing. Let's run through so you can see how to make modifications if you need to, or you can see the actual issue that most people are having with the NVUM controller. Okay, first we're allocating our memory. And then we've got some variables here. Our Z probe height is the height that we're going to be at in the Z axis when we do our X and Y probes. Our X reposition is how far we move in the negative X direction before we start the probe. And our Y reposition is how far we move in the negative Y direction before we start the probe. These are the variables we're pulling from the DROs I've added to the screen set. First off, we have a get OEM LED 825. This is checking the probe LED to make sure that it's not grounded before we start our procedure, and if it is, it's going to fail. Then we move on, we're going to zero our X, Y, and Z. We'll do our Z probe, so we're going to get our current position. We're going to set our feed rate, and then we're going to do our actual probing procedure. This is where we run into an issue with the NVUM controller. The normal way of doing this is use a while is moving and a W end. This is a loop that will stop macro from moving forward if the probe hasn't finished. The NVUM is moving on past this and therefore we're having random issues. So what I've done is I've used the get OEM LED 825 to check if the OEM LED 825 is illuminated before we move on. That means we won't move on to the next step until the probe has touched. Once that's touched we go on and we wait for the DROs to update and we set our plate height into the DRO. And we wait again and then we move off the plate by 10 millimeters and wait for the moving to finish this works correctly with a g0 and then we send a log message now we're going to reposition for our x so a g0 x and we're going to reposition to our x repos variable that we set above and then we're going to bring our z we're going to go down to z0 in our case we can change that if we want then we're going to do our while is moving again this works with g0 so we're not going to move on to do anything until this is completed now we're going to do our X probe. We're going to get our current position, set our feed rate, and then we're going to do a G31, which is our probe. And then we're going to do our get OEM LED wait again to make sure that that's finished before we move on. We're going to wait for our DROs to update. Then we're going to set our offset and we're going to apply that to our DRO. We're going to wait for it to update and then we're going to move our X off by 10 millimeters. Do our is moving and wait for it to finish and throw our log message. Now we're going to do our Y reposition. We're going to come up by 10 millimeters. We're going to move to our X10 and our Y that we set above, so 30 millimeters. And then we're going to move back down to our Z probe height, which we have at zero. Wait for this to finish moving. Wait for the DROs to update. And now we're going to get our position, set our feed rate, do our probe, wait for the LED again. Wait for the DROs to update. Set our offset and then set our DRO. Wait for it to update, move off by 10 millimeters, wait for it to finish moving, throw our log message. Now we're going to go to Z10 plus the plate height, and then we're going to go across to X0 and Y0 so that we can see if things have worked correctly, and set our feed rate to where it was when we started. And that's all. Thanks so much for sticking around guys. Please throw a like and subscribe if this has helped you, and stay tuned for some more helpful videos.